This is Mike, and you're listening to Feeling Twisty. I'm really glad you're here. For those of you who have read Neville or listened to him at all, I'm sure you've heard of The Bridge of Incidents. Here's a quote from If You Really Can Believe. You do not have to go out and devise the means to the end. Having assumed the end, the end will devise the means. You will move across some bridge of incidents leading from where you have assumed the state to the fulfillment of it, because you go to the end, dwelling in the end. You walk across the bridge of incidents leading up to the end. When I first started getting into practicing the art of imagining, as Neville calls it, I used to do a lot of waiting. I'd imagine my little scene that implies my wish is fulfilled, and then I'd wait and wait for that bridge of incidents over which I'd go to the fulfillment of my desires. I'd spend days and weeks, even months sometimes, waiting for events to start changing. I'd even think to myself, when's it going to happen? I'm not even on the bridge of incidents yet. What the hell? Where's my bridge? (laughs) The truth of it is, is I wasn't occupying the state of my wish fulfilled, and I was looking for signs. I was looking for indications that I was on the right track. I was saying that I believe that consciousness is the only reality, But then I turned to the outside, looking for confirmation to reassure me. I would think I successfully moved into the state of my wish fulfilled, and then I'd wait and watch for things to start changing. If I didn't see something different immediately, I'd start doubting that I did it correctly. Then I'd go back and redo the scene again and again and again. Surely after a dozen times, that would do the trick, right? (laughs) And then I would look around, and if I didn't see some immediate change, then I would get frustrated, frustrated that the bridge of incidents hasn't even started yet. Have you ever felt like that? (laughs) I'm not even on my bridge of incidents yet. I was assuming that there was always a separation between my imaginal act and that point when I'd start moving across that bridge. So I I rarely succeeded in realizing the fulfillment of my desires. I was perfectly expressing the results of my assumptions. I assumed that there was a lag between my imaginal movement and the point when things would start to change. So that's exactly what I kept experiencing. I would sit around the house, not doing anything really, just waiting for things to start changing. Oh my God, it was torture. I was torturing myself with that state I was in, that waiting and watching state, never truly dwelling in the wonderful new state that I played with in imagination. I say played with because that's all I was really doing. Really nothing more than daydreams, fantasies, because I didn't trust God, my imagination. I didn't truly believe that by simply entering a state, by assuming the feeling of the state, was enough. Which isn't really a surprise. I had plenty of memories of all the ways I failed in what I called my past. So many examples of my failures to give life to that this can't be that easy. It can't really all be up to me. In the lecture, The Awakening of Faith, Neville says, how can men call upon him in whom they have not believed? The average person does not believe in himself. Your faith in God is measured by your confidence in yourself because your true self is God. So how could a man call upon himself when he does not believe in himself? Your faith in God is measured by your confidence in yourself. Because your true self is God. So how did I get to that point of believing in myself, believing as God? By daily practicing the art of imagining. 
Instead of waiting around for the one big desire, instead of watching for the bridge of incidents, I chose to explore the power that I really am. As I did, I began to understand how quickly things can change if I allow it. I stopped believing in any lag between my imaginal act and its expression in my world. I stopped waiting around for indicators telling me that I am now on that bridge of incidents, leading me to the fulfillment of my wish. I started truly living in the end. As soon as I decide my wish is fulfilled, I know that that bridge of incidents is already in place. From the instant I imagine myself into a different state of consciousness, everything changes. Did you hear that? From the instant I imagine myself into a different state of consciousness, everything changes. My course has already altered. I don't have to wait or look for the series of events that will lead to it because I'm already encountering them. Everything that happens from the point of my assumption on is my new state unfolding in my life. If I don't live in that assumption, then I won't express it. I want you to get how quick this is. It's instantaneous. As soon as you enter the state of your wish fulfilled, you're already on the bridge of incidents. And you won't be on the lookout for signs or waiting for things to start changing because you're now living in the new state. You're living in the end. I used to think, oh, I wonder if this is part of my bridge of incidents when something a little different happened in my life. Or I would start thinking of ways I could orchestrate events on the bridge or trying to figure out ways to get myself to the bridge. I was giving up uh, who I really was in those moments, looking at secondary causes, thinking anything outside of me can affect me, or looking for signs from the universe, or trying to reprogram my subconscious. In my experience, that type of thinking tells me that I'm not truly living in the end. If I were, then I really wouldn't be watching and wondering and thinking about reprogramming. I can look back and see how events came together perfectly to bring about the fulfillment of my wish. And I cannot think of one time when those events were in any way near what I would have done if it had been up to me to figure it out. I remain in the feeling of my wish fulfilled. That's my new state. And things come about perfectly, naturally, smoothly. Neville says faith is loyalty to unseen reality. You know what you did. Well, now that's unseen by mortal eyes. Now you remain loyal to that unseen reality and see how this bridge of incidents is woven and you do not consciously devise it. No man can consciously devise the incidents necessary to lead you to the fulfillment of what you've done. My world is my assumptions pushed out. If I assume that this is going to be difficult to understand, which I used to, then it will be difficult to understand. It'll be slow. If I assume it'll take imagining or affirming many, many times to reprogram my subconscious, then it will take many, many times. You are your assumptions. You are God, awareness, assuming the state of being that you are experiencing. This doesn't just start now as you begin diving into all of this. This is how it has always been. You are forever imagining yourself into states of consciousness. If you're practicing this daily, you can't help but discover the truth of who you really are. 
I can tell you this over and over, but you won't really know it. You won't really believe it to the point of knowing it until you experience it for yourself. You are pure imaginative power. Your belief that you are something less than that is the only thing stopping you. But Mike, you don't understand how hard my life has been. I may not have had the exact experiences you've had this time around, but I have been in some doozies of states. In just this lifetime, I've had many near-death illnesses since I was an infant. And as an adult, I was diagnosed with permanent brain damage, along with a permanent movement disorder that had my body twisted up like a pretzel and racked with pain 24-7. I mean pain like severe muscle cramping. If you've ever had a Charlie horse, multiply that by 10. And imagine that. Well, don't imagine it. But (laughs) from my face down to my toes all the time. I had broken relationships and serious financial problems. And all of them changed by assuming something differently for myself. As soon as you move into the state of your wish fulfilled and feel the satisfaction of it, that is the moment your life changes. You don't have to wait. It changes right then. Continue existing in that state, that feeling, and you will express the state in your world. I know you will. I absolutely do. Because if someone like me can transcend his limitations, so can you. Who you really are is absolutely limitless. You can move into and express any state of your choosing. Assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled and everything changes right now. I love you. Oh, I love you so much. This is Feeling Twisty.